Hello, my friends, and welcome back. <sighs> Today, we're going to be taking a look at some of the problems you may encounter if you try to go shopping as a fat person. We're going to take a look at some videos from Classy Fatty Babe on TikTok. I want to talk about what it's like to shop for clothes as a fat person, even just outside of the issue of size inclusivity, because I don't think thin people understand what it's like. Like it's a totally different experience. So you can see that clothes were just thrown on the ground. There were random clothing items on random racks and the folded items definitely hadn't been gone through and just like tidied up. And okay, yeah, you're describing a clothing store. She doesn't think that this experience is unique to fat people, right? You don't think that it's all nice and orderly in every other section, do you? Because guess what? It's not. And there was even a rack with dresses hanging on the floor. The plus size section was tiny and the clearance section was right behind it. So there were straight size clearance items sort of like scattered within the plus size section, including a cart full of discarded clearance items that just got in the way. Oh my goodness, a sense of general disarray. And then this is the straight size section. You can see it's immaculate. There's plenty of space. All right, I disagree with the term straight size. I know it's got something to do with sewing or some crap because somebody told me that, but uh, I still think it's dumb. Even the mannequin's outfits are definitely more like thoughtfully designed. They're <laughs> what? Yeah, when you go over to the plus size section, uh, the mannequins over there are not thoughtfully designed at all. They're just thrown together, man. What the hell does that even mean? There are plenty of options for every occasion, and there were a few items on the ground, but I could tell that was just like stuff that fell from hangers, nothing that customers really did. It's pretty clear that the straight size section is tidied up throughout the day, and the straight size section was at the front of the store versus the plus size section is always kind of sandwiched at the back of the store. So you just don't have anything else to complain about, huh? You're complaining about where the plus size section is in the store? You know, apparently you're lucky that they have your size at all because I've seen other videos where they were complaining that they don't have sizes big enough. Next, she's going to be like, the music coming out of the speakers wasn't quite as loud in the plus size section. It was all the way in the back. The lighting wasn't very good back there. They, uh, they used some busted up ghetto ass mannequins. It was just a couple of milk crates held together with some duct tape and a wig thrown on it. They keep the plus size section in a different part of the store. It's not even indoors, it's outside. You have to like go out these doors and through a tube and out to just like some shed. There's no AC out there. It's all dirty. There's dogs coming and going for some reason in and out of the building. It's crazy back there. And so we are coming up on the swimsuit section. Just the straight size swimsuit section was bigger than the entire plus size section. Okay just the straight size section of swimsuits was larger than the entire plus size section of the whole store. Okay, maybe the store doesn't cater to plus size people. You know, a typical business model for a store would be something like um, whatever items people buy the most of, that's what the store carries the most of because supply and demand. The manager of the store will look at the inventory and be like, oh, we're selling out of a lot of these uh, polka dot medium sized bikinis. Make sure you stock a lot of those. And uh, we need to expand the section that carries those because people buy this kind of crap all the time. So we need to expand that entire section. That's how it works. So if you want there to be more selection in the plus size section, you're just gonna have to convince everyone to gain a bunch of weight. What a bizarre complaint anyway. The world isn't designed for obese people. It's outside of the norm. Well, you know, there are stores that specialize in big and tall size clothing. So if you want more of a selection, I guess you would go to one of those. Your Ross or whatever store you're going to is just going off of supply and demand. And I'm not even showing you all the straight size swimsuits. There were even more like across the aisle that cuts through the store. And there's so many different options in varying degree of modesty. But there's no excuse for not having more plus size options. 75% of women in the US wear a size 14, 16 or higher. Okay, they don't have those sizes. I'm sure they have those sizes like crazy. So this is the pride section. There were zero plus size options in store. And again, this section was pretty- What, the pride section? You need a section for gay clothes? If I was gay and I went into a store and they're like, we have a special pride section just for you. I'd be like, what? 
pretty neat, you know, pretty tidy, pretty well kept. So they only carry plus size pride merch online. And this is just more footage of the pride section only going up to an XXL. And there were baby clothes and pet items in the pride section. Why do you keep talking about the pride section? I, I thought you are going to, to be fat and complain about fat stuff. Now you're trying to lump this in there too? They prioritized dogs ahead of fat people. Regardless of your views on fat people and weight loss, we deserve to be treated better than animals. Now we're going to take a look at the bonus clip. Hello fat people, what's something that you do that you're pretty sure really pisses off thin people? I'll There's a lot of things that I do. One thing that really makes thin people mad is when I eat McDonald's. There's a lot of things you do that make thin people mad, like eating McDonald's. Oh yeah, dude, nothing makes me angrier than when I see some fat person harming themselves by eating more of the garbage food that made them the way that they are. That really, that really gets in my craw, I tell ya. That, that really grinds my gears, man. Like, if that's what makes it easier in your mind, uh, we're on a battlefield, right? You're on this side, and you're like, I'm gonna do what I want. And I'm on this side, and I'm like, no, you're gonna do what I say for your health. In your mind, right? In your mind, I'm an oppositional force, or we, or whoever the heck is speaking truth, is some sort of oppositional force to your delusions. So you have to play the role of the victim or someone who's being wronged in this situation. It's very narcissistic for you to assume that anyone would be mad at you for eating McDonald's or whatever. You said there's a lot of stuff you do that makes thin people mad. That's bizarre. Um, I see a lot more angry fat people than thin people. Usually the people that are bitter and jealous are the ones that are angry. Mad at you for what? To me what I find more satisfying and in my opinion more productive is just making them uncomfortable. And one of my favorite ways to do this is when I refer to myself as fat in a positive or neutral way. And they say things like, you're not fat, don't say that about yourself. Okay, I'm gonna have to call bullshit on this. You never spoke with another human being in person and called yourself fat. Um, and you're like, I used it in a positive tone and this and that. You're just using talking points that you got from other people's TikTok videos like Hannah or something like when you use the term fat in a positive or neutral way or whatever like and I'm sure when you called yourself fat nobody corrected you and they're like no 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 you're beautiful. <laughs> Here's what really happened. You were hanging out with some people and you're like oh I feel so fat. And then you were hoping that somebody would respond and be like, Oh no, you're not fat. Don't call yourself that. You're beautiful. But what actually happened was you're like, Oh, I'm so fat. And then the person next to you was just like this. Acting like they didn't hear it. Acting like they don't see you. All of a sudden they got tunnel vision. Like, I, I didn't hear anything from over there. I don't even, I didn't see anything over in this direction. I didn't hear anything coming from this general direction. To which I respond, I said I was fat, not ugly. And then everyone clapped? Is, is that, is that what happened next? And that forces them to reflect on their biases. Biases, eh? That does force them to reflect on their biases, does it? So, okay. Let's just, let's play the scenario out, alright? I'm chilling. Uh, this chick calls herself fat. I'm like, oh, you're not fat, yada, yada, yada. And then she's like, I said I'm fat, not ugly. And she's like trying to be all positive or whatever. And then me, I'm going to be like, oh, I have all kinds of biases against fat people because I thought that fat meant ugly, I guess. Yeah, see, when you play it out, like actually think it through and say it out loud, it sounds pretty damn stupid. When you use your ears to listen to the actual word part, um, you can hear the stupidity of it. It's, just, it's, a, it's quite a phenomenon. Not every larger bodied person uses the word fat. Larger bodied person. Not every larger bodied person uses the term fat. Some of them use the term larger bodied person, and then everyone laughs at them. You call up the theater, do you guys have seats for larger bodied persons? And they're like, what? You mean people of size? <laughs> they're like, we only know the term people of size. I, I don't know what this other term is. We're only half woke. But I do because I have unique experiences, oppression, and joy. That You've got oppression. I see somebody with an excess of food who's sitting in a pool 
with a beautiful floaty behind her, might I add, is talking about oppression. My goodness, my goodness. Back home with my body size. So thin people, it is not your job to tell a fat person how they should talk about their body. What? Why? What? The, what? What? What the hell are you talking about now? It's not the job of a thin person to tell a fat person how to talk about their body. What the hell? You're coming out of left field with that. And I understand a lot of you might have trauma around that word, but that's for you to unpack. And if you... Okay, so you understand that a lot of people have trauma around the word fat. And then you said, but that's for you to unpack. So basically, I know that using the term fat may offend some of you, but fuck you. Okie dokie. That's kind of weird coming from someone who's supposed to be part of some acceptance community, right? You need some resources for how to do that. I'll be posting some. And in this playlist, I have a video with journal prompts to help you get started. Um, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna do any of that. So classy fatty babe is a classic victim um, somebody who is oppressed within the fat acceptance community. We saw them crying about the lack of inventory as far as fat people clothes go at a regular store. And then they also proclaim that they like to make thin people uncomfortable by calling themselves fat and using it in a positive way, which is bizarre. Um, no thin person cares what way you use fat or what you refer to yourself as. Nobody cares. So, um... I'm gonna go ahead and have to call a good old bullshit on the whole story, madam. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.